there's PFI dude he's been helping me today SHOT Show 2011 this is nothing fancy going to go talk to the good folks at Beretta what? nothing fancy we didn't think you liked Beretta think again Berettas are awesome their Model 21's are outstanding I still haven't table topped it I did table top the old discontinued 950 Jetfire which hello I wish Beretta would bring back that is the coolest 25 auto ever made super lightweight super compact it is. it's awesome uh, but let's get into the details with mr. Ben what's up what's up SHOT Show is coming to a close. We're knocking over people here in the Breader booth. Thanks for making time for us. No problem, man. Anytime. We talked a little bit off camera. We're going to hit it hard right now. You bet. So the PX4 line has really become kind of our premier series of pistols. Um, the latest ones to come out, the compact is the one that's really brought the family all together. So we had the full size, we had the subcompact, the compact is now bringing it all in, so we have all three sizes. It's got an ambidextrous slide lock. So on both sides there, you can hit it lefties, righties. Hate it. It has a lanyard loop. You can deploy if you need it. I do like that. That's low. Or that's a really low profile too. Low speed, too. high yeah, if, you don't need it, it, if you don't need it, you can just tuck it right okay, in. Okay, now that's high speed, low drag. Exactly right. Nice. It has all the standard features we're used to on the PX4. It's got the slide machine from Barstock. It's got a cold hammer forge barrel that's also chrome lined. Um, obviously, all the pistol stuff, everything that Beretta builds for the most part, we build from a military and international perspective. So you're going to see chrome lining and a lot of stuff and a lot of the features we put in the pistols are from that perspective. You've got a little bit of experience building military pistols. I'm thinking, years. right? Yep. World Defender 92. Built our nine. first combat pistol back in 1915. It was in World War One, and we've been rocking it world round ever since. So yeah, I have lots of rounds downrange in your M9 series, thousands. So the uh, Inox, is, uh, that's our fancy name for stainless steel. We now have a, an Inox PX4. This is going to be shipping later this year. Uh, we'll have it in 9mm first, and 40 will be right along behind it. Actually, that one, that's a 40 right there. But cool. We'll have the 9s. What's your rounds count magazine-wise? You know offhand? Yeah, you bet. The 9mm holds 17 rounds. The 40 cals hold 14 rounds. I love it when guys know their specs yep. off the top of their head. Well done, Ben. Gold star from TMP, bro. Woo! So, okay, cool. This one's Trick and PFI dude. Not a huge PX4 fan. Keeping it real. I'm not. But he, he actually looked at this one. He's like, actually, I like that one. Yeah. This was the this 45. Like. We took the standard 45 PX4. Um, and actually, the original 45 was built because SOCOM put out a request for a 45 caliber pistol. Correct. At the time, we didn't have a 45. So the first thing we did was actually build this. So we built the SOCOM request. We called it the Special Duty. Every single part in the pistol was built from the ground up specifically for that contract. We didn't just spray paint an old gun tan and then submit it to the contract. You built it to meet the spec. We built the thing from the ground up for the spec. This is the first 45 that we have built in this fashion. We then kind of built the, the trim down version, which same frame, slide, barrel, everything. Obviously, we did a shorter barrel, but then we did all standard commercial style parts like we do in our other PX4s to build a commercial model, which is the same price, you know, same price range as the other ones. But this guy still, this is a thousand plus, but it's got, if you want to go, I don't know, swimming in a volcano or whatever, that's definitely the pistol to go in. How about the specification for reliability with that SOCOM contract? Did you guys meet it with this? Well, this is the funny thing, and it's something that wasn't publicized. The only pistol to actually successfully pass all of SOCOM's tests was a Glock. I'm just messing with you, man. <laughs> was actually the Beretta. No, and that's was with, with all the Are you dead serious? I no, didn't I'm know serious. that. Yeah, I'm serious. And the only way you'll know that is if you actually know guys that were at the testing, which obviously we do. And the thing is, because the contract was shut down, because nobody in JSOC could agree on what they wanted, this, these guys right, were right. 1911s, these guys wanted whatever. So the whole thing got shut down. The kids started the fighting, they're like, fine, we're yeah. not going out to eat. Well, every group wants their own thing, right? Yeah. These guys want this, that, and the other, so it got killed. But this one... Confirmed, passed the over the beach test, everything that they wanted it to do, it did do. And I'll tell you this, holding uh, your beloved FMP tactical, this is a trimmer gun right here. It is. It's, I can it's, tell that just by looking at it. It's yep. less bulky. And it does have a lower round count. I'll yeah. give you that. Uh, most of the other guns they built were 14 rounds in that in that area. Yeah, flush that mag is 9. 15. The flush mag is 9. The extended is 10. But we designed it that way for a very specific reason. We wanted it to be able to fit in the hand. And it had to pass the over the beach test and be able to go through the sand trials and all the other and stuff. And you want it to be less gay. Hey, that's <laughs> you didn't see that one right? coming, did it's you? critical. Nice. Hold that and tell me if you like it. I, I'm sure I do. And shooting is Ergonomically, just don't hold back. Do you like that or no? Yeah, it actually fits better here than the FMP. my FMP. My FMP hits me here. 
That's the only thing I hate yeah. about it. Pop that mag and let's check it. You remember we, we kind of dinged F and P for half. Oh, that's the way it's supposed to be done right there. Yeah, and, and on these both are the sides. Spike, these have the PVD yeah. coating on them. Instead so of that sand stupid notch in the, the other front. Other yeah. yeah. And all your 92 mags are that way now too, aren't well, they? Well, we have a special sand resistant 92 mag that ships in the M9. But not all 92 mags come that way. Are they still phosphate coated then? Or the standard ones are phosphate. Well, we have two different ones. We have a phosphate coated and we have a gloss one that we use for commercial. Yeah. Uh, Military spec is a phosphate. Who's making your gloss one? Uh, it's a company we own, actually. Oh, okay. So it's our own. Yeah. You could call it internal. <laughs> cool. Um, well, as long as it's not phosphate coated, whether it's, you know, I'm hooked up, bro. You're going to have to help me. There we go. <laughs> too many clips. <laughs> too many clips. It got hooked on my Cali 3.5. Um, but if it's. If, you know, gloss blue, yep. uh, that's going to feed fine. It's yep. just that phosphate on the interior of the magazine Absolutely. that I find to be the problem. And you'll see that. Oh, we have no mags in these, so I can't show you. Oh, that's there it right. is. Well, they get stolen if you leave them in. The latest guess. one that comes with the gloss coat magazines, and it's not the sand resistant, but it is gloss coat, so they feed in kind of a different fashion. Right. Is the A1 series, 92 and 96 A1. What's cool about this, one of the first things, 40 cal coming back in the house. So we've got 40 cal back, <laughs> no. which we haven't had 40 cal in a number of years, and there's a lot of guys that were kind of ticked off about that. Yeah. So now we have 40 40 cal is such back. a great all oh, around. Absolutely. That is my only Beretta that I own. A 40? You still have it. Yep. How come we have not seen that in trench warfare? Because I haven't wanted to scrape it up. Oh, it's collectible. It's that uh, United We Stand. Oh yeah. Limited edition. Yeah, the limited edition. Oh, we'll have cool. To get one of the 96 A1 so you can go out and hammer it. Yeah. Cool. Well, so some of the things that we did to this, obviously we put a rail on it because you know rails and Velcro sell guns. You gotta have, you gotta yeah. be able to bolt stuff. I love on. the rail, brother. We stuck on a dovetailed front sight because mm -hmm. that was one of the big issues with the 92 and the M9 is people couldn't put on. You'd have to drill that and tap it. You couldn't just knock yeah, it out of there and put, put something on. Sight, so. Exactly. so now you've got a dovetailed front sight. Nice improvement. Movement. Right. One of the other things that we did that allows us to go back to 40 caliber without going to a Vertec or the uh, Brigadier slide is that little blue piece in there is actually an internal frame buffer. So no it redistributes the recoil energy so you're getting the extended life that you need. Before we used that big fat slide yep. and the slide would slow down the slide velocity, blah, 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 and give you the life, that, you know, the energy that you need. Yeah, but it changes the firing characteristics too, which I does. hate. Yep. A la high point. Recoil impulse is very different. So we put that frame roof in there, so now you can run 40 caliber. We left it in the 9mm for extended life. We also put in a captive recoil spring. Digging it. So when you Love take it. the gun apart, no flying across the room. There's some little things like the breech block, the little locking block in here. We changed the profile cut on how this thing interfaces with the barrel. I almost have to tear it all the way apart so you can see it. That's fine. But instead of having blocks that last maybe, say, 25, 30,000 rounds, these things are going another 10, 15, 20,000 rounds without fraction. And you got a lot of data to draw from too Absolutely. Yeah, with you bet. all the armed all services this is R &D, you know 25 years with the military yeah another little cool one is you remember when you put these together you have to slap that lever back up to lock it in well with the a1 series we which is no big deal no, in my opinion not. but these little teeny things now when you rack it boop, just locks back in yeah I'm loving it that's little way cool features there everything else is what you're used to it's got the same transmission everything runs exactly the way that you're used to it Standard That's the A1. Action. If yep. I bought an M, uh, I was going to say M9, but uh, 92, that's it right there. Actually, 96 in that version. Yep, absolutely. Obviously, as you talked about with our 32s and our 25s and 21s, these are legendary pistols. We've been building pocket pistols now for like 60 years, 70 years. You kind of led the pack. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're talking back in the 80s, you were doing pocket we pistols when no one did. We have prototype guns when Browning was building some of their first little mini guns. And we have prototype guns that predate Browning's guns. Nice. How are these selling? These, with, because there's what? a lot of competition in the market What's now. What's amazing is, with very little effort, you know, we, we have to be careful where we put our effort because we have an incredibly large product line, even right. outside of attachment products. Right. We don't put a lot of energy to these, and every year they sell, and they sell, and they sell, and they roll through. These are incredibly popular. One of the things that we did on these guys is we came out with the alley cap. Uh, it's an, we had done this before, mm -hmm. but now we're doing it kind of with a few new tricks, and we did it on the new Wide Slide 32. Obviously, you've got the standard tip-up barrel for easy loading. Sorry, I was off. Yep. That makes it very cool. And on the tip-up barrel, we added in the XS Express Tritium Night Sight. The big dot. Yep. Thanks for not infecting me with your hey, whatever you what got. I'll put it on him. Yeah. It's, it, but dude, no matter what we do, we're gonna get sick from shot. Oh my god. It's it happens. Yeah. So the other thing it's that like we did. Prison it's kind of hard to reload these subcompact guns, so we put a bevel on the magazine well. Nice. And the normal Tomcat does not feature that. Correct. <laughs> 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 
32, I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of the cartridge unless the, the, the bullet launcher is really tiny Absolutely. and compact. Yep. I think there's the compact 380s are so small, even the oh, nines no. are amazing. Well, that generation of guns has really changed and it's come yeah. a long way. Yeah, it's a well-made gun though. I love the 21, like I said, 950 is even better. This is a cool little gun. That's our 87 target. I like it. We took our standard PFI 87 does not like it. This thing was designed for, really it's a competition pistol, it was designed for international and um, a lot of different types of competitions that most of us don't even know about. Yeah. And again, this is one of the guns we bring in very few of these every year, but they sell very well. It's a very cool kind of RoboCopy looking gun. Yeah. Um, I've known guys that actually have reamed out the bore, been able to put a suppressor on there and then they lock like a little light on here and a dot sight and they make a little That's mini That's a lot tactical. of work. Yeah, I could think of a dozen other ways to get to that Seriously. end without doing but, that. But hey, you know what? If you're going to do it fully cool, you might as well start <laughs> with a fully cool gun to do it. So. Oh, uh, that's expensive. What is that? Yeah, those are those are more like a thousand dollar gun. I mean, that's seriously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's precision. I mean, fully engineered. The way they machine these things and put them together. I mean, that's the full deal. Made out of gold. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, speaking of not putting a lot of energy in it, the Neos line. It the sells, line, but and guys will say nothing line. fancy because I've reviewed several 22 pistols. Yep. Uh, and they were like, why don't you review the Neos? Uh, one, I just have a hard time warming up to the looks personally. That's it's just got me. its own style, that's for sure. Yeah, it's really um, rackish grip angle that I'm not digging so much. What really makes it work, um, we've had a lot of newbies to shooting that really like this gun. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is because they're not able to articulate what it is about it that really they lock into. But a lot of newbies really, really enjoy this gun. Is it a favorite with a female shooter? Female shooter. I have heard that, by the way. Bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the other things that we've had a lot of success with, we've just started launching, is the carbine kit. I think that's kind of cool, Now, actually. what's cool about this... And I love how the magazine retains so solidly. It's, it's called speed. <laughs> speed unloading. Well, the problem is the magazine I catches where guys me. like... I don't, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's up here. Well, and that works on the carbine, though, to have it up there. What's interesting is if you feel this guy, it the barrel's nothing. made out of polymer. Oh, wow. It weighs nothing. It's, it's a like a power gun. And you've got toolless disassembly, so you use this little wheel here to disassemble the gun. You can tear this thing down, throw it in a backpack, go on a hike. No big deal. Is that a kit, then, for the regular Neos? It is a kit, yep. So you buy the carbine oh, kit. Once you get a Neos, you can slap this thing on there. Fiber optic sights. you got a huge so rail it just, peep. Uh, it's just lined, then, or is it nope. actually? No, I've got a barrel liner okay. in there, and then a polymer sleeve that goes on the outside. Shoulder it, um, PFI. See what you think. Yeah, you're not holding anything. It's nothing, huh? The only downside, if I there was, is 10 round max. Yep. Well, yeah. and that's the nature of the 22 year old. Yeah. What's interesting about this, actually, when you shoulder this thing, is with carbine kits, what a lot of guys don't think about is if you had a standard magazine catch, how do you hit the magazine catch? Yeah. You have to almost dismount the weapon. Yeah, because you can't it. come through. Now just use your index finger, go up top, get your magazine. Oh, catch. I see it's right there. Okay. There it is. So it does make sense. With that magazine right catching that position in a carbine, it's really a no-brainer. That's way cool. So, but I actually like that. That's pretty sick. We this should take one of these out too. Really I would love to. I'd like to get one of those and go run it in the You have a Neo though? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I don't, I don't I like. I, don't I like this, but I don't like this. Does that make sense? I don't know that I want to buy a Neo to buy this kit. I'm sure we can probably set <laughs> you up with a Neo. <laughs> I'm not buying it. You are. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm talking about. You'll buy the kit. I'll buy the Neo. <laughs> I would love to shoot this thing. Sure I bet it'd be you fun. Guys squared away. All right, I'm we'll cake your card. We'll keep you in mind. We'll just yeah, we'll check it out for Beretta, man. Yeah, absolutely. I better not say that on camera because then we're gonna get all kinds of requests. Yeah, we don't want stuff. Dude, when are you running the Neos? You said you would. You didn't do it. Come on. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. Uh, I'll say the limfac on this is a 10 round mag for what we do. Yeah. We go out there and we set some running gun courses up, dude, yep. that will kick your butt. Yeah. And we spray a lot of let, not spray, but we're sending a lot of rounds down range. 10 round mag, you're going to be reloading a lot. It's I'm like a 1911. Saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I'm going to build another 22, <laughs> yeah. 22 long rifle. And I'm not saying Hold that on, I got to show this. I got to show this. That's our new Check assault that rifle. Check out. The assault rifle is available in 223. Right now it's only for military and law enforcement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've had it deployed with the Italian MOD for quite some time now, so we actually have field awesome. use in this Dude, thing. Dude, you're rocking this booth review. It has been. Ben is rocking this booth this review. This is cool stuff. So this is going to be uh, available in 22. <laughs> 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 Excuse I don't think me. We actually did we? No, that didn't. Dude, if you did that, um, let's just say theoretically, if, if someone is. were to do that in 22 and it was lightweight, 
and it competed well against the SIG 522, because that's your competition, bro. Absolutely. And you tell your engineers, they better look very carefully at what SIG did, because that gun is reliable. It is. You it throw is. any rounds in there, I'm talking, maybe not Remington Gold tip, I didn't do those, but. Isn't that funny how most handguns, most rifles, you can throw anything you want in them, but when it comes to 22, they all like something different. It has to it do can a lot be. with the, the brass width and how much that brass flexes in 22. And the lubrication the manufacturer throws on there. Hopefully the, the none. The problem is there are certain manufacturers, and I won't get into who, but there's yeah. certain manufacturers that their brass, the thickness of their 22 long rifle brass, when you fire it, it expands out too hard. And so you wind up getting so these funky, the case well, you get these funky yeah. feeding Good issues. Good point. You can't really pin down what it is, but when you when you learn about the metallurgy and how it's working, yeah. it turns out that's what it is. So Interesting. So not available. Never going to be as reliable as standard no. cartridges. That's what I said. The manufacturing thought. process. Right. You don't like the reliability, reliability of a 22, whether it's that Bobcat. Go centerfire, bro. That's right. Go centerfire. 25 ACP, 32, 389 mil, yeah. 40, That's 45. The reason we fight wars and centerfire. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That's a cool looking gun. Well, these things Second type of cool, huge. We actually have that at the LE booth. If you guys want to take a look at it. We can yeah. show you some of the stuff that's cool about it. Yeah, that's, uh, how much does it weigh? That's where I start Six with coolness. And a half pounds. Seriously. Yep. What's the profile of the barrel? I can't tell by looking at it here. Uh, it's, a, it's a machine gun barrel. I mean, it's designed Medium profile, not, Medium not profile, not skinny, skinny, right? All right, I'm interested. Let's Six and a half pounds. You want to watch show me. Go over there. There's a PX4 line. Everyone, Team Pierce, review the PX4. Here you go. Reviewed. Just kidding. We need to shoot it some more. Oh, let's walk over the All right, you're doing a great job, Ben. Some sporting shotguns in the Beretta booth. Oh, so this is your LE. Why didn't we start here, dude? I don't know, man. You can't do Yeah, you're right. We actually got sure Bob Panel that. over here. He's showing the guy how this ARX works. It's being checked out. Here's What's this right here, bro? This is the ARX. That, That's the ARX 160. Is that a functioning model, though? Yeah, it is. That's the real deal. Let's see. So you said six and a half pounds. Oh, my gosh. It's got a bunch of kit on it. Obviously, I that don't thing know. There's, no way. there's no way. No way. This is a cool booth. I like it. We've got a lot of the same stuff here. The 92s, 96s. I am impressed with the features on that 96A1, though. I would love it if you did it because... Please do. Because it would really satiate a lot of dudes in TMP. Yeah, I think we need to. I think we need to take yeah. the 96A1. And let's be fair with you and I might really warm up to the design well, after I've shooting it. I've never been it. a big fan. I've got a 40, but they've just never appealed to me. But that one kind of does. Take okay. it out and let us see yeah. if it wears. And well, that's the tell on any gun. Get it out and yep. shoot it. We've got a shoot house set up that uh, we actually shut down just before you guys got here. But we have a four scenario shoot house inside the booth using a simulator. It actually ejects brass. You get to shoot against awesome. the screen. PFI and I need to go there and dominate it. Yeah. Just kidding. Oh, man. I got to step off. Here. Right on. Awesome lighting here. I love it. Okay, go, brother. So this is the ARX 160. This is our new assault rifle. Again, it's uh, currently only available for military and law enforcement. It's got some really unique features. Obviously, we have the buttstock that can be adjusted in multiple ways. Locks in. A lot of guys are asking about this latch point here. They say, well, hey, man, that's made out of polymer. That's not going to last. Well, not true. They built a robot in Italy that sat there and opened this thing, closed it, opened this thing, and closed it. They Robots it are cool. They, are. they let it run for three days, came back to check it, let it run for another three days. Over 100,000 repetitions to validate that this little latch point would survive. Fair so enough. when we test stuff, we know that it works. I'm thinking the SIG 522 didn't do that. No, I'm sure. So some of the things that are cool, we got a mag catch here. We got a mag catch here. Ambidextrous. And we got a mag catch here. That's nice. So no matter how you oh, want to set yeah. this thing up, you can set it up. Where's your bolt lock hold? Charging handle. All right, well, let's look at that. And is it, I can't even see the side of this. Okay. So now your bolt let, and bolt release, and bolt catch are right here inside where your trigger finger is going to be, anyways. We're going to push this up, pull our bolt to the rear. That's going to lock it. If you want to drop your bolt, just press that, it drops the bolt. That's slick. Now let's say that you don't want the charging handle on the left hand side. All we're going to do is line it up with this little indent here. We're going to pull it back, pop it out, push it through the ejection port, push that it over here. So oh, cool. So now you've got that a right handed bolt. Cool. I would buy that rifle just for that. that now let's say, so cool. is that a reciprocating handle? It is reciprocating because it also acts as your uh, as your forward assist. Yeah, so I don't mind. For some reason, if you need to actually engage and run something, you actually want to have something to lock. I don't mind it at all. Yep. I mean, I mean, the M4 system is not the end all, like AK variant, Mini 14s, there's yep. a lot of other guns that run that. Scar, yeah. Scar runs that as well. Now this little guy here, if you can see that little silver thing inside there, yeah. if you're shooting and you're ejecting to the right, 
but you want to maybe shoot around a wall and eject to the left, all you need to do is grab a bullet tip, push it in there, the gun will start ejecting to the left. Dude! Ejects left, ejects right. Seriously, now, I'm one impressed. Of big, one of the big things in the industry right now is, oh yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> one company I would say, you go to their website, check them out, it says we can change out our barrel in five minutes. Other companies say we can do it in two or three minutes and you have to do this. Okay, sure, let's talk about changing out barrels. So I'm going to go ahead and grab <laughs> yeah, this I love here. It, mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. When a manufacturer brags about his product, yeah. this is a perfect example. They're confident. They're like, check this out. We'll stack it up against everybody. All right, this so is right cool. now, we haven't done anything. We're going to grab this tab that's on both sides of the guns. Should we time it? Yeah, go for it. Go ahead, we, should, we should time it. Let's time it. <laughs> we, we they can here. do it on camera, though. Just look where the he starts with the video. All right, we ready? All right, say one. Go. Look at that. Dude. I couldn't even hit stop fast enough. I was waiting Dude. for more of a show. And you got the barrel out. Let's look. You, you didn't lie, brother. That is a medium profile barrel. It's not a wow. super thin you barrel. Can feel, you can feel the weapon system without the barrel. Impressive. It's fully polymer. Now there's a ceramic resistor that sits inside. You want piston, it's piston. Ceramic resistor piston. that sits inside that basically redirects the heat. Okay. And we were able to go full polymer because of the ceramic resistor. Now that ceramic shield or resistor, basically what it does is it redirects all the heat energy. You'll melt your barrel before you melt the receiver. Outstanding. Wow. And that's a big problem I see with piston guns is it transfers heat right to your hand. Now this piston stays in constant contact with your bolt carrier. Nothing there, guys. Nothing yep. there. And that's with the bolt in it. We just have the barrel pulled out is all. It's the whole carrier assembly. Put it all together and PFI, you hoist it and tell me what you think weight wise. You're going to see guys see this video and they're going to want you to produce this gun. Although, here's the kicker it, I, it's not going to be an inexpensive gun when it comes out. Actually, well, I can't quote a number. Well, ballpark it. What I can tell you at this point and probably be very safe well, well under $2,000 MSRP. Okay. That puts it in the ballpark with a lot of other guns. And the features you've thrown out to us, we just actually stumbled on this, didn't we? Yeah, I didn't I know anything stumbled. about it. I didn't know anything about this. Now, the thing is, if you want to fully disassemble it, ARX 180 by Beretta. The other thing that makes this neat is it has pin-free disassembly. So if we're taking the gun apart, we want to get all the other components out. I want to start frothing. You guys got to hand it to Ben, man. Cold Turkey, check out the review he's doing for Beretta. Oh, yeah. Great Whoever job. your boss is, he probably ought to give you a raise. Although, we can get an engineer to take that apart so, if you want. Your lower pops out without pins. Pin free disassembly. That's your lower. That's the upper receiver, basically, you just hit that latch point with your charging handle. Center it and pull it out. Center it, pull it out, and that there's your gun. That is killer. Not a tool used to no disassemble tool. it. And we won't go there because of oil and junk, but you sure. can disassemble the bolt all the way down to the firing pin and the springs with no tools. Awesome. Check it out. And guys probably want to see this in great detail. I'll do the best I can. Very M4 AAR 15 M16 style belt, bolt, which is proven. Yep. Works great. Absolutely. How you, uh, your extractor, same? Extractors very similar. Yep. Okay. It's got dual extractors, like you said, because it'll control left it and right. Just turns the bolt, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there's a button at the back that we hit. The extractor engages at various points, and it'll throw out to either side. And you can see we've got a dual extractor head on there. Right. So it depending cool. on where we put the pressure, it'll pull and throw to either side. Outstanding. The piston, that piston is stays in constant cool, contact isn't it? with the head of the that carrier. That is really here. incredible. So your piston will stay in constant contact. It never parts ways. Right. So if it hits dirt or junk or whatever, it's just going to push it straight through. They never. It's not a slap and a throw. It'll stay in constant contact mm. the entire time. Let me tell you something, Ben. From what you've shown me, and this isn't hype, guys. This is me trying to keep it as real and honest as I possibly can. The problem with the polymer rifles that have come out are twofold. One, the weight. Uh, the ACR weight's what, 8.1 yeah. dry? Okay, the weight's an issue and the cost is an issue. If you can Outrageous. come in with the price points you're talking about, six and a half pounds with all the features you're showing, no degradation of quality, I think you got your, win your winner right here for Beretta. I'm I just so. saying. I mean, I, this has been a product that I've been very excited about. Um, obviously, you know, we have to get over here inside the U.S. and so start producing it. Yeah, and I'm assuming that everything else is squared away. Good trigger, it's reliable, it's accurate. If all, I'm going to assume that all those are, you can, are the case. You can try the trigger. I mean, that's a production trigger. And yeah. again, these have been fielded. These are out in use right now with SF units. Not with USF SF. They are with special forces. Foreign militaries. Foreign military. 
service. It's out there Decent? Used. How's that forward hand guard? It looks kind of bulky. No, actually, it's really slim. Decent, and you could throw a VG on there, no it problem. It actually fits your hand. Well, we actually have, we designed the GLX grenade launcher. I want one of those, by the way, before GLX, I leave. Along this parting line here, the GLX can be popped off and mounted below the ARX Outstanding. System. That's what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that picture. Yeah. And this again, I can't this believe I didn't even know about this. Ditto. Well, it, it's not available. It's still. still that's our yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I failed. swimming. I fell. I'm swimming trying to keep up, dude. Well, that's part of the super secret sneaky squirrel stuff going on here at Berta, guys. So. Yeah. Possibility of that coming to the U.S., Ben? Uh, I would say incredibly good. Okay, cool. In fact, looking over his shoulder here, I'd say better than incredibly good. <laughs> date. Give me a date, ballpark, and we dates, won't hold you to it. Dates I can't do All at right. this point, but we're talking, uh, we're talking more than months. We're talking probably uh, less than years, but yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. But it'll be... Uh, I would like to see it go before any anti-gun stuff We gets may traction. have to flip a calendar before we get there. And we're working on it. I mean, we're aware of the fact that this is something that's desirable for the market. People are into it, so we want to see it come forward. So. Well, what you need to do is watch this video and look at the reactions and comments from the quality TMP viewing audience, of which you have a lot of law enforcement, great civilian guys, gals. You watch the comments in this video about the, the, the gun you're showing as the ARX 180. You'll see, there's your feedback right there, bro. I want it just for the charging handle. Weight-wise, what do you think? Oh, very manageable. Uh, granted, that's mag out, but still. Seriously, six and a half is what you're saying. Yeah. And it uses standard NATO AR-15 magazines, M16 magazines. Uh-huh. I mean, that's with the optic. <clears throat> Here, tell me, brother. Yep. I was just in Italy about three, four weeks ago. We were playing with these in select fire and suppress and the whole deal. Um, a lot of people have asked, did we do a, an adjustable gas system? And the answer is no. And the reason is, is if this operator decides that he wants to put a suppressor on his gun, instead of threading a suppressor on, he says, hey, do me a favor, pull your charging handle back, lock it open, just pull this back, lock it open. And I'm going to reach up here and instead of threading on a suppressor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach up, I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to put a new barrel on. I'll pull this off and we're going to take a barrel that's specifically tuned for that suppressor or is given a specific twist rate. We'll basically design a barrel for that suppressor, for that specific munition, and we're just going to stick that into the gun. Mm. So, and you can actually take this out and put a new barrel in faster than you can thread on a suppressor. With easily, exactly. easily. So, Stuck with the pistol grip, that might be a downside. Just like the scar. Hope you like the pistol grip because you're Oh, stuck yeah, with you it. can't change it's it. It's a molded variety. <laughs> the model that will be coming to the U.S. Uh, will actually have a pistol grip that's. The U.S. market's going to be more familiar. With. Yeah, this is a little bit skinny. Yeah, yeah. It'll be bit. more. It'll be more like what we're familiar with right now. I wouldn't mind one more notch in length of pull. This is really short for body armor, for front arm. Yeah. But for me, That's and if I throw a magnified optic on it, I can tell you I'd like to be out here. Otherwise, I'm really crowding the optic. And that's if I'm running normal optic. If I'm running a reflex, who cares? Well, on the issue, I'm obviously mileage. in development, guys. You know, most guys are running body kit and or they're running these Correct. things up over their shoulder with mm -hmm. so they're really long like the post stuff typically has gone away because you know here if you wind up getting in a body kit or something like that guys are going to wind up running all the way down or going up on the shoulder so yeah. but that's all stuff that before we went into full production we're going to review all that yeah. as well as these big bass with these huge <laughs> arms baby 6 three. Sorry. Yeah, that's the ARX one and uh, I think people. Oh, I think I was calling it 180. I, I think you I were too. It the 180 it's too. a 160. Sorry, we got the nomenclature jacked up. Big win, Ben. Big win. And then a couple cool guns over here. Uh, Seiko line. They're they're dealing the Seiko line. You guys bought them. Purchase Seiko. Yep. <clears throat> Sako. Sako is our uh, our premier bolt gun line. Uh, Tika is also owned by Sako, so we got that. Yeah. And uh, we use the TRGs for our premier precision rifle, used by the best of the best. And TRGs. Wow. Very expensive. It's about as good as they get. Well, it's as good as they get. You guys need to go talk to the Savage booth. <laughs> Oh, they we, 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 could, we could set up a challenge for you guys uh, to. Take that to <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love it? Yep, yep, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, man, that's Beretta. We covered only highlights. Sorry if we, we forgot your favorite gun. Thanks for your five for coming along. It makes it funner. Heck yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. Anytime you get anything, let us know we're here for you. All right, excellent stuff. Beretta. We'll see you guys. That's fine. I'm not sure what he's actually doing.